May the Father of mercy, the God of all consolation, be with you. In the waters of baptism, Ronnie died with Christ and rose with him a new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Good morning, everyone. I wish to extend a very warm welcome to all who have come here today to our Requiem Mass for Ronnie McDonnell, a highly respected and much-loved parishioner who has been suddenly taken from us. 
Ronnie will be a huge loss to all who had the privilege of knowing him. And today we gather as a faith community to honour and to pray for the happy repose of Ronnie's soul and to give thanks for the many gifts which he bestowed on others in life. We also pray for the family members who grieve today and remember especially Ronnie's sisters, Madeline and Geraldine, his brother Noel, his sister-in-law Joan, his nieces, Maria, Madeline, Bernie, Lara and Karen, his nephews, Peter, Michael, Billy and Alan, his cousins, and all the extended family and friends. We pray that the Lord comfort you in your grief and fill you with his peace. And before we begin our Requiem Mass, I invite Noel and Andrew now to bring forward some symbols relating to Ronnie's life. Now I'd like to invite his three nieces now to come forward to light two candles in remembrance of Patrick who died four weeks ago to the day that Ronnie died and one candle for Donald, Ronnie's brother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And today as we gather, we gathered to say farewell to Ronnie. We say a life that has impacted many people in this parish. A life that has come to an end as far as physically but it hasn't come to an end because life doesn't end with death. We pass through death to a new life. So as Christians, we gather with the faith and the hope that Ronnie is now enjoying his eternal rest in the kingdom of God. So as we gather today, we ask the Lord to welcome him. We also ask the Lord to accept our thanksgiving for the life that he has lived and for the impact and the goodness of, that he has shown to others during that life. Also, we are aware of our own failings. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Ronnie, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And our first reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. Please stand for the Gospel acclamation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, we are all united here today in sorrow at the death of Ronnie MacDonald and the reality of death with all its pain and sense of loss confronts us at this moment. But as we are united in sorrow, we are also united by something else, our faith. And confronted with the reality of death, we must allow ourselves to be confronted with the reality of our faith because our faith is what opens our minds to the whole picture about life, death, and what happens after death. Only in the light of our faith can we begin to understand what has happened to Ronnie and how we are to keep going from here. When in our faith we speak about heaven and resurrection and the next life, we do not speak about these things primarily because they give us consolation and strength. They certainly do that, but the primary reason we speak of these things is because they are true. God has spoken his word to us. We hear it in the scriptures and in the teaching of the church. God has broken the silence about death and told us that he has conquered it. Death was not part of God's original plan. It came into the world because of sin. Death is not from God. Death is from turning away from God. Yet God did not leave us in death's power. He sent Christ who died and rose again and conquered death. God has spoken to the world through Christ and told us that he wants to give each one of us victory over death in and through Jesus Christ. And because of this, a Christian is not silent in the face of death, Many people on coming to a wake or a funeral do not know what to say because death seems to have the last word. But we who believe know differently. We speak, Christ is risen. Death has been conquered. 
Many people think that the story of the human life is birth, life and death. For a Christian it's different. The story is not birth, life and death, but rather life, death and resurrection. Death does not have the last word. Life does. Death is not the last chapter of the human story. There's another chapter to come. It's not the end of the human story. It's the middle. The end of the story is the resurrection and the life that is no end. The farewell that we give to Ronnie today is a temporary farewell. The burial we give him is a temporary burial. He will rise. He will live. The ceremony today contains many reminders of this, and it points to the fact that Ronnie was baptised we sprinkled the coffin with holy water at the beginning of this ceremony. This recalls the waters of baptism that were once poured on Ronnie. The candle which burns is the Easter candle, which was present, is present at every baptism, and of course was present at Ronnie's baptism, and symbolizes the risen Christ. When Ronnie was baptized, the life of the risen Christ was poured into his soul. At baptism, God rescued Ronnie from the power of death and transferred him to the kingdom of Christ, a kingdom of eternal life. Christ said to Ronnie on that day, you do not belong to death, you belong to me. Therefore, a Christian does not merely die, a Christian dies in Christ. And those two words, in Christ, make all the difference in the world. We belong to him by baptism and we live in him by a life of prayer, obedience to his teachings, and faithfulness to the sacraments of the Church. If we live in Christ and die in Christ, we will rise in Christ. In the midst of all this, should we grieve? Of course we grieve. It is natural, but we grieve with hope that Ronnie is now at peace in God's kingdom. And today we give thanks for Ronnie's life. He is born and raised in Knock Lower, one of five children born to John and Mary MacDonald. He attended Stormonstown National School and then went to De La Salle School in R.D. At an early age, he started work on the family farm and he continued working there right up to his death. Ronnie was passionate about farming and had an eye for only the best livestock. He also cultivated a variety of crops. Ronnie was a widely respected man in the community. He was a gentleman who was very private, generous and humble. Ronnie had a sweet tooth from childhood, as was evidenced by his determination to eat his mother's Christmas cake, which he locked safely in the wardrobe. He cut a perfect square hole in the back of the wardrobe and helped himself to some cake. It would have remained an unsolved mystery, the mystery of the shrinking cake, had he not been caught by his mother behind the wardrobe when he returned for further helping. Ronnie was an accomplished player at both Gaelic football and soccer. He played on the Lowes minor team, the RD minors, and played a number of times for Lowes juniors. Ronnie joined Clyde Rangers in 1962 and played a prominent role in beating St. Brides to win the Junior Championship. In 1969, he again helped the team to win the Junior Championship in the Junior League by beating his former club, Sean McDermott, in the Championship Final. Ron C Ronnie also played for the team at senior level, and to this day, Ronnie is always remembered in Clyde Rangers Club very fondly as one of the best midfielders that ever played for the team. A big, powerful man with a great pair of hands for taking the ball from the clouds. A truly great footballer, a tough player who could look after himself, but never dirty and always fair. A pure gentleman. Every Friday he went to Jonesboro to purchase his weekly lottery ticket. And in 2013, he struck luck by winning £200,000. Ronnie enjoyed going to the Listowel horse racing and the agricultural shows. He lived a long and healthy life, which he lived to the full. He enjoyed going for his dinner daily in either Dooley's, Hunterstown or Cullen. On last Friday, Ronnie called to see his sister Madeline 
and it was there that he collapsed and died. Four weeks to the day that Madeleine had lost her son. Ronnie is now reunited with his parents, John and Mary, his brother Donald, his nephew Patrick, and his cousin Tommy. He will be greatly missed by all who knew him, but especially by his family and friends. And we pray today that the Lord comfort you in your sorrow and fill you with his peace. We now commend Ronnie to God's infinite mercy in faith and in hope. For those who live a sincere and good life, the hour of death is transformed into the hour of glory because Christ gives them the crown of eternal life. So let us pray at this time with confidence in this time of loss. Ronnie lived God or Christ's commandment of love. May he now hear those words Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Lord, hear us. Ronnie showed much love for others in this life. May he now experience the loving mercy of God. Lord, hear us. From his place in the kingdom of the Father, may he intercede for us and continue to help those who mourn him today. Lord, hear us. And for all who mourn, that they will receive strength to assist them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. And remember all who have died. And today we pray that they may enjoy the promises of eternal happiness. Lord, hear us. Eternal rest grant unto Ronnie, O Lord. And may he rest in peace. And may Ronnie's soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God, rest and peace. Amen. Lord, may you support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and evening falls. The busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And I'd like to invite Maria and Geraldine now to bring forward the gifts in the offertory procession.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Ronnie, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Ronnie, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him 
in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, and remember Patrick and Donald and all the deceased members of the MacDonald family, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we now stand and dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Behold, O good and most sweet Jesus, I cast myself upon my knees in your sight, and with the most fervent desire of my soul, I pray and beseech you to impress upon my heart lively sentiments of faith, hope, and charity, whilst with deep repentance and grief of soul, I ponder within myself and mentally contemplate thy five most precious wounds, having before my eyes that which the prophet David put in my mouth concerning thee, O good Jesus, they have pierced my hands and my feet, they have numbered all my bones. And we commend Ronnie now to the protection of our Heavenly Mother as we pray. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your clemency hear and answer us. Amen. And I invite Julie to come forward now to say a few words. Miss me, but let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the Master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. Thank you, Julie, for those words. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Ronnie may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And I want to extend my condolences to the family who are grieving here today. I know you've, some of you have travelled from Australia. You're very welcome here on a safe journey back. And may Almighty God bless all of you in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass ascended, let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Ronnie. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. I invite you now to remain in silence while I bless and incense the remains.
in response to the intercessions is receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to Ronnie's aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you, Ronnie, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto Ronnie, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Ronnie in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Ronnie forever. And now in peace, let us take Ronnie to his place of rest. <laughs>